Hi everyone, it's Chris here at Sacred Space. Welcome back to my channel. So today I just wanted to do a quick video on Veganuary and specifically about staying vegan after Veganuary. So if you clicked on this video, I'm guessing you already have some idea about what Veganuary is. But if you don't, simply put, all it means is going vegan for the whole month of January, meaning that you're consuming no dairy, no meat and no animal products whatsoever in your diet or lifestyle. It can be really fun, but I do appreciate it does come up with some challenges as well, especially for those people who are transitioning from a meat and dairy diet across to a vegan diet. So I went vegan in 2017 after trying Veganuary. I'd been vegetarian for many years and I'd heard some things about the dairy industry and about animal agriculture, which didn't sit right with me. So I thought I would try it for a month and see how I got on. And Veganuary is a perfect opportunity to do that because there are literally hundreds of thousands of people doing it all over the world. Um, so I thought I'd kind of take part in that movement and see if I could do it for a whole month. So without further ado, let's get into the top bits of advice that I have for you for going vegan and staying vegan after Veganuary. So number one, is quite simple really, it's just to keep focused on the reason that you're doing it. For me, it was for the animals. I'd heard some things about the dairy industries and the meat industries that didn't sit right with me. Now I will admit that in the first couple of weeks of doing Veganuary, I was still quite blind to what went on in the meat and dairy industries to the full extent and the horrors that happen. After a couple of weeks, I was finding things a little bit challenging and a friend at the time who was vegan uh, recommended that I watch a couple of documentaries, wrote a couple down for me. I remember going home and I didn't really want to watch them because I think in a way I felt it would hold a mirror up for the things that I'd been responsible for. So I put it off for a couple of days and then I had a day off and I popped on Netflix and I can't remember which I watched first but I think it was Cowspiracy and then I went online and watched Dominion. One of the main things for me that really kind of jolted me was learning about the egg farming industry. It shows footage of what happens to male chicks when they're born. At like one or two days old, they're put into a macerator, which is like a large blender, alive, and they're on a conveyor belt and they're kind of sorted through to which ones are the females and which ones are the males, and the males are sentenced to death there and then. And it's Stephen talking about it now, it's horrifying. I'd always seen these little happy egg packets and just, you know, thought that everything was ethically okay and you weren't in a kind of morally grey area. I know that's a pretty hard hitting one for number one, but it's facts like that that really kind of instilled in me that I had to be vegan, that had to become part of my identity because I didn't want to participate or be a part of anything that causes cruelty and harm like that. It's not just the egg industry as well. If you look into the beef industry and anything to do with pigs or any animal that's used as a commodity, the conditions that they're kept in, the ways that they're slaughtered um, is just absolutely horrendous. You know, these animals want to live and they deserve to live. So I kept that at the forefront of our minds. Anytime I found it tricky and almost bought a chocolate bar or something, because we all do have them moments to begin with, I just kind of instilled in myself that if I was doing that, I was directly supporting those industries because I had the facts now. So I would just say kind of, educate yourself and then keep in the center of yourself that you're doing this for the animals and just by one person doing this has a massive impact so that's my number one so number two for me is overcoming peer pressure so when i went vegan some people were really supportive and some people were supportive at first whilst they thought i was doing it for january as a bit of a fad or you know challenge or personal challenge or whatever and then as soon as he found out that i was now vegan and this was like my lifestyle this is who i am i think they themselves felt challenged and it challenged their own ethics and because of that it created some animosity and a little bit of friction you can dispel that with positivity which is, is exactly what i would advise to do so i cooked for those friends um, I showed them how tasty vegan food could be. Every time I had any kind of pushback or any kind of difficult responses, I'd always kind of challenge that with why I'm doing it and try and stand my ground. I hate conflict. I'm not a confrontational person, 
but I swore to myself that I would stand my ground when it came to these things because otherwise the peer pressure would kind of cave in on me and I felt that I would regress and go backwards. So I did, I stood my ground, I was really positive, I cooked for all my friends and I made it such a positive thing that they kind of came out like a bit of an asshole if they were challenging me because I just made them this delicious dinner and, you know, I'd bake them cookies and stuff like that. And the friends that didn't quite get it, you know, we're still friends now and some of those friends are vegan. So that's really good. I think the best advice I can give you for peer pressure is stay positive, stay focused and your positivity will rub off on the people that are a little bit unsure or feel challenged by your new diet. So keep going and stay positive. Number three... This is just quite a simple one. It's just to veganize all of your favorite foods. So for me, I love lasagna. It's like one of my favorite foods. So the first thing that I did was learn how to make a lasagna. And it was really easy and it tastes delicious. And I was so impressed that I could eat lasagna vegan and it tasted even better. So whatever it is that is your kind of favorite comfort dish, I guarantee you can make it vegan. If you're unsure how to do that, drop me a message and I'll try my best to either link you to a recipe that I think looks good or tell you a recipe that I know. So drop me a comment below if that is something that you're interested in because I might be able to help out. Um, but if you do veganize all of your favorite foods, it kind of gives you less of an excuse to regress and go back to um, dairy or meat. So find your favorite dishes, find your comfort foods and make all of them vegan. Trust me, it pays off in the long run. Number four is to embrace transitional foods. And what I actually mean by transitional foods is vegan junk food. It gets a little bit of a bad rep. I think everyone sees a vegan lifestyle as this super healthy lifestyle. And it definitely can be, but you must remember that you can still treat yourself occasionally to you know, a burger or a pizza or whatever it is that is your thing doesn't mean that you have to miss out on that. But what I would say to you is that while you're transitioning and learning new vegan recipes, I would just give yourself like maybe once a week just to get yourself a burger and some fries or a pizza or some ice cream or whatever it is, because I think it kind of like positively rewards your brain. So I would recommend having like a reward Friday and just like chill from cooking and get yourself a takeaway or whatever and embrace uh, vegan junk food like once every couple of weeks or whatever it is. You won't have fear of missing out and you'll realise as well that you can have tasty nutritional food but then of course if you want in a lazy Friday night in watching a movie there are plenty of options available. Number five is to find a support group. So it's a pretty simple one, really. I just went on Facebook and joined, I think it was York, which is where I was living at the time, York Vegans and a UK Vegans Facebook page. And there was a Reddit group as well that I'd scroll through. And the people on there were so friendly. I would talk about, you know, does anyone know where I can buy vegan leather shoes? And literally I would get like 20, 30 comments within an hour of people saying, oh, you can go to this shoe shop and get these vegan shoes that are only £30. The support in that community is like no other I've ever experienced. So find a vegan support group. Facebook's a really good place for it. There are literally, I think the group has tens of thousands of active users. I'll put the one that I used in the link below which is the UK Vegans page, really helpful, some really lovely people on there. And it's just nice as well to see what other people are eating. And I found it really useful to think, oh, okay, you can go to Sainsbury's and buy X, Y, and Z. So find a support group and be part of a community and that'll help you as well in your first couple of months in uh, transition over to a vegan diet. Number five, is just a simple one, it's to take your vitamins. I think too much emphasis is probably put on this, but it is important to make sure that you are getting all of your nutrients and all of the vitamins that you do need. Some of the things as a vegan that you might lack is B12. It isn't as serious as a lot of things on the internet state that it is, but it is quite important. So what I would say is get a daily B12 vitamin. You can pick up these from your local health food shop or from a Holland and Barrett and also get a packet of multivitamins as well. And if you take those daily, you're not gonna have a problem. You'll find that most professional nutritionists recommend anyone on any diet to take supplements anyway, because all you're really doing there is topping up and making sure that you aren't lacking in any major nutrients or vitamins. Number six is preparation. What I mean by that is uh, make your meals in advance or make a shopping list. Kind of, if you're planning ahead and you know where you're going in the beginning, it'll be much easier. So I remember when I first went into a supermarket and I literally had no idea what to buy. I was walking around picking up like broccoli and apples because I knew they were vegan. 
and everything else I was terrified because I had to read all the ingredients and it was a little bit overwhelming. So on my next shopping trip, I did a little bit of research and I found a group called Accidentally Vegan uh, on Instagram and Facebook and they put all these different ingredients and things that you could buy from main high street supermarkets and shops. And so I started making a little list and you know, and then so I could tick them off as I went round. I went to, I think it was a Morrison's at the time and did my weekly shop and I found it so much easier just from planning. So I think planning takes the stress out of um, anything new. So I would strongly recommend preparation. I also made my meals in advance. So I'd make myself a lunch for the next day for at work. So I had that already. I'd have some of the meal for the evening prepped as well. So I found preparation a huge thing for me. I'm not that organized generally, but I did find putting that extra effort in um, made the whole thing so much easier. So yes, preparation. Number seven is to find a friend or a mentor who can help you along with your vegan journey. So at the time that I went vegan, I was working in an office. There was one other guy there that was vegan and had been for many years and he was giving me some tips on what I could buy, where I could buy it from. I found it really useful actually because he'd be able to point me in the right direction of the best food places to go. He could uh, let me know the best websites to buy vegan clothing from so I wasn't buying any leather or any animal products. I just found it really helpful to kind of have someone to chat to. I'm still really grateful for that. So if you can find yourself a friend or a mentor, whether that's someone you know, or even if it's just someone online, it, it doesn't matter. If you can have that kind of secondary support group of someone you can chat to about your um, difficulties and challenges, then um, you should definitely take advantage of that because it is really helpful. And it's always good to have a chat about something new as well, isn't it? So find yourself a vegan friend, a mentor if you can. Number eight is to educate yourself. When I did Veganuary, I had no idea what I was doing. Um, I learned it all kind of on a whim and through friends and through support groups. You know, when you go vegan, there'll be a lot of people giving you false information about um, the animal industries, animal agriculture and um, dairy industries. And without kind of knowing the facts and what happens to the animals, I find myself kind of ill-equipped to have these conversations. So I would say watch some documentaries, go online, make sure obviously you're finding reliable sources and you'll see for yourself, you know, what happens. There's some really good movies I mentioned before, um, Dominion is one, and also Cowspiracy and Forks Over Knives. And recently I watched Game Changers, which is really good. It focuses more on the health and fitness side of things and more on the science, but definitely worth a watch. That is on Netflix. It's not always easy to find out what happens in these industries, but I do think it's important to know and to understand and to watch at least once. But I do think that anyone who is struggling with Veganuary, I'd highly recommend to at least watch one of these films, just because I think it's important to keep that at the center of your mind while you, you transition into to a vegan diet and lifestyle. So it definitely helped me and I, I know it'll help you as well. Number nine, lastly, is just to have fun with it and embrace the journey. I think a lot of people who do Veganuary can take it really seriously. And it is important to do that because obviously we're doing it for ethical reasons and to eat and live more compassionately. But I do think as well at the same time, we're trying new foods. This is a new chapter and a new adventure that you're embarking on. So I would highly recommend kind of giving yourself a pat on the back and seeing it as a journey uh, and seeing it as kind of like a new adventure. Um, try new foods, go new places, you'll meet new friends. Um, and I think, you know, if you do it and stick with it, it will change your life. And it will obviously change the life of, of many, many animals as well, just by one person going vegan. Keep going, please keep going. Um, I did, um, and I had difficult times. And like I said, I just stuck to the principle of remembering why I'm doing it and let that kind of become my kind of central core. And then I just started having fun with it and I haven't looked back. So since going vegan from a personal standpoint, my life has changed massively in a very positive way. I just wanted to tell you guys that you can do this. I hope this advice was helpful and please hit the subscribe and the like button if you'd like to see more of me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.